Sean, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Sophia. How are you? It is nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me on my So Zoom In. Of course, my pleasure. Look at you, you're a young man, just taking on the world. I love it. Now, you are a film and TV composer, right? Yes, that's right. Right. Now, this also means you're a musician, right? That you play music for yourself, do you? Or Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a guitarist, primarily, yeah. What kind of guitar? Uh, so I grew up playing pretty much uh, metal and rock. Uh, and then I went to uh, Berklee College of Music in 2015, and I think since then I got more into jazz fusion and blues and uh, a whole bunch of different styles. Uh, now I play like a mix of different stuff, but in my free time, I just like putting on some jazz standards and just uh, messing around with them uh, between film scoring projects and stuff. So yeah. Very cool. Well, do you have a, an acoustic guitar or electric guitar? I, I have an electric guitar. Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, I believe it's a PRS. Um, Got it back in 2016. It's been serving me well, and yeah. yeah. Oh, so do you ever just like play it just for the sake of playing it? Like if you ever yeah, want Yeah, absolutely. And I think the best part uh, about being in LA also is uh, I know so many amazing musicians out here uh, and many of them that went to my college as well. And every now and then they have these jam sessions uh, that I get called out to. So I just take my guitar, go have a couple of drinks with them and play on some stages and have a good time, yeah. All right, well, I have to ask, I'm always fascinated when music is in film or TV. It's almost like the music becomes a character themselves, you know, or it like adds so much. So when, when did you decide or become part of that industry of composing for that medium? That's a great question. Um, so I think it was around, after I graduated from Berkeley, I was a big fan of writing music for ads and, and stuff like that when I learned uh, the techniques and the skills in Berkeley and um, I wanted to take it a step further but I didn't know which direction to take it into and I think it was the movie 1917 that I watched uh, back in 2019 not so long ago that I decided that the power of music in a film can be so impactful to the entire narrative uh, it's almost like a transformative experience with or with and without the music. And Thomas Newman was the composer for that film. And I think at that point, I was just like blown away by um, such a powerful movie taken to such a higher level just with the music. And I was, I felt like this is something that I want to be able to deliver to, to, to audiences and to viewers. I want to be part of that process to make music uh, just elevate the film's value. And I think, yeah, that's when I decided that I wanted to get into not just orchestral, uh, music as John Williams music has and like all the animation and the old school stuff has but more of a hybrid sound that collaborates that has both of those elements kind of fused in together so yeah I think that was pretty much the start of my journey into film scoring that's it. Well because I know a lot of musicians they have that dream of you know being the next big star or rock star or having a band is that something that you still want to do? You know, have your band or you know. yeah I mean not necessarily to be the next big um, big musician as per se uh, while there is a lot of satisfaction and gratification from being you know prominent on stage and touring and stuff like that it's kind of an impractical combination with a career with film scoring um, I can't really leave my studio that much because if I'm if I'm if I'm traveling, then I'm completely handicapped work-wise. I can't get any work done on the go, unless of course I have like a mini kit which I can take with me, like a mini piano and some headphones and stuff. But there's a lot of gear and equipment over here in my studio setup that allows me to get stuff done, which I can't do if I am touring as a brand and stuff. That being said, though, I would still love to keep playing uh, every now and then on downtime. Uh, because it's still fun to play. And that's that's one of the main things that got me into music. I, I can't let that go. So, yeah. Wait, well, so, so say when you're working on a TV show or a film, um, when you start mm -hmm. coming up with music, what is that process like for you? It normally, nine times out of 10, and I can probably vouch for majority of film composers out there, um, 
it begins with a discussion with the director in terms of the vision of what they want, the palette of what they're looking for in terms of the soundscape and the instruments involved, some stylistic references that the director may kind of gravitate towards. And from that point on, I think this is what I would say nine out of 10 of us do. We sit with a piano or a keyboard and just kind of flesh out basic themes and basic ideas. And from that point on, I think it, it's, it's more developed into the style that the director prefers. So, yeah. So you, you pretty much leave yourself open to all and any genres, right? When it comes to- Yeah, more or less, more or less. It's, it's, it's a wide spectrum of work that we are kind of made to do. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry, is the construction too loud in, in, in the video? Um, I can hear you fine. I, I, I can't hear it. But you know, it actually yeah. sounds like the background music, you know, of our little background world. music. Okay, okay. As, as long as it's really good. please let me know if it's if it's too much of a hindrance. I can find another location to to try and to try and zoom from. Well, it's it's so interesting. You know, here in LA, there's always so much construction going on, no matter where or when. You know, so. I know, right? It's just the life of the city, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, how long have you been in Los Angeles now? So LA, it's been about I would say a little more than a year since I've been here. Uh, before that, I was in San Diego uh, working a job with the team. Uh, we worked on primarily music for ads. So I think we had clients like Nike and Volkswagen. It was a it was a fun roster of different clients. But I think my freelance work started to pick up more, and I decided to split ways with that team and move up to LA and and you know kind of fire away as much as possible in all directions to get things going as a freelance composer. Well, how, do, how did you like working for ads? Is it something that's a lot faster or is it kind of the same structure? That's a, that's a great question. It's, it's very different, I'd say, in terms of working for ads and ad music. Every now and then, yes, I do still freelance uh, as an ad composer with various production houses. And the turnarounds are more or less between 24 to 36 hours. So it's very fast paced. Um, it's, it, there's, there's no room for necessarily like fine tuning but the final thing that you do has to be fine tuned to a maximum and you go off one description of a brief in terms of what the what the clients want and it comes down to just interpreting that in the best possible way there's no more you, you can there's no more room for more questions or or, or more uh, revisions or anything like that it's just one execution and yeah so i think it, it's a more fast-paced environment and it, it requires a different mindset and asks for a more diverse set of skills in terms of being able to work in various other genres and even in a song format genre, not just a scoring genre. Um, and I think it was a very fulfilling experience to be able to try all kinds of different things in different situations. And I feel some of the skills that I gained from that does come in handy with film music as well, especially communicating with the directors and clients to understand what they want. Um, I think that's one of the most important things because at the end of the day, you're not just writing for yourself, you're writing for the clients. And at some point, um, you may be kind of unhappy with the direction it's going, but if the director feels that this is what they want, that's the final say, you know? So, yeah. Do you ever get the sense of you have like having a lot more freedom in what you're creating or is it always very focused on what the director wants? It's, it's, it's very... Uh, it changes quite drastically from, from client to client, director to director. Um, I've, worked with a, I've worked with quite a few student directors, student short films and stuff like that. And most of them, they're kind of fresh out of college. Um, and I've had a few years on them in terms of the industry. Many times they say, uh, I, I kind of make the executive decisions on the music. And I say that, look, I don't think this really works here. Maybe try it this way, show it to your team and see what they think. And they're like, okay, yeah, maybe that's, that's a good point. Yes, all right, I agree. And in some cases they're like, no, you need to change like more veteran directors. Sometimes they say that, no, you need to change this exact note and this exact beat. I don't like this, remove this and use this part from here because I like that there. A lot of micromanaging, which is not necessarily a bad thing. If at all, I mean, it's more clear communication and gives me the idea that we are going to get to the final product much more sooner because you know specifically what you want. So it's kind of like a, a two-sided situation where sometimes freedom is great, but sometimes hands-on directing can also be helpful to get to the product that we want, you know? Well, um, I, I had a chance to see... Oh, I lost you again. <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry. Well, I didn't hear that last part you said. I'm sorry. 
Oh, no, I said it's kind of like a two-sided situation where sometimes um, hands-on directing can be useful to get to the final product while simultaneously having freedom with what we do is also much more satisfying. So yeah, the, the pluses and negatives to both, I'd say. Um, I had a chance to watch the series A Good Cop and I loved the music in that. And I'm glad I asked, yeah. I asked the director and writer of the show, you know, who did the music? You know, and your name came up. I'm like, wow, you know, you're very <laughs> talented. You know, and I what Thank I really so liked was the music added like a whole new layer to the show, which I felt, you know, had it not had that music, it would it would have been kind of missing something. So I found that very exciting to know that something like music could really elevate a project overall. So I was Absolutely. so excited. Thank you so you know, much. You just Thank you. It was fun. And it's funny because since then, I've really become much more aware of music in shows. And That's fantastic. It's, it's interesting to see how it really either moves things along, slows things up, or you know, really gives you an essence of what's happening. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I think a lot of people just don't really pay attention. They just take it so for granted. You know, so when you dive into the process of working on, say, a film or a series, do you get a chance to watch the dailies or do you how, how does that go about? So you start connecting with the story itself. So normally the process is I'm I'm kind of out of the production um, phase. The thing I'm not part of the pre I'm quite rarely part of the production I'm always in post so normally where we as composers and where I come in is around I'd say picture lock um, for the cuts that they have um, David uh, director of uh, good cop David Chai he did send me a lot of the dailies well in advance because this was a very tight scheduled project um, that needed all kind of aspects, all, 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 the, all the factions of the entire crew working from as early as possible to, to be able to be ready when, when, when uh, post-production came in. So he did show me dailies to get an idea of what the, of what the things looked like, what the, what the shots looked like, what the characters' expressions were, how they carried themselves, the entire vibe. Some of the color grading was done uh, on a few of the cuts so I could see like the mood. and. From there, just kind of use that to just flesh out some demos, not time-locked demos, just some, some pieces of music that could fit well with the thing. And I think that helped work towards the main theme because we got the main theme done before the first episode was, was done. And it was done not to picture at all. It was, it, was, it was just completely just a piece of music that I had to write based off of the dailies that I saw. So in that, in that situation, um, yes, it's, it's informative to be part of the production process because of the schedule. But most of the time, I don't think um, for the other projects that I've done, for the feature projects that I've done, I'm normally coming in around post-production. There were some, uh, some instances where I was assistant composer on a couple of feature film projects where I didn't even see the film at all. I just, I just was given directions on how to write the music, what they were looking for, um, and send them a bunch of tracks, send them a bunch of cues. And I saw the film for the first time at the premiere uh, when, I, when I went to watch it. So it's, it's quite unique, I think, uh, the entire approach everyone has towards making a film. There's so many variables involved that uh, there's never really, I guess, one fixed way, which is, yeah, which is so fun about it. Well, that sounds like it's more exciting because it keeps you on your toes, right? It keeps you Absolutely. flexible and flow. Um, have you ever been inspired for your own music based on composing for a client? Yeah, I think um, the, the, one of these, uh, so again, coming back to a good cop, uh, we went through, I think, I don't even remember, maybe 20 to 25 different versions of the main theme before we kind of landed on what we wanted. And ironically, what we wanted was close, similar to one of the first few iterations that we did. Um, but in that journey of experimenting uh, with different styles and constant U-turns and backtrackings and maybe let's do this, maybe let's do that. And so there were a couple of tracks that I really liked for myself that David said that this is a beautiful piece of music. 
I really, really like it, but no way in hell is this going for the show. It just doesn't fit. And I, I was like, yeah, maybe you're right. But I held on to that piece and I kind of developed it a bit more. And I kind of have it as like, you know, just a, an own composition of my own. So there are many times, I guess, a lot of revisions that don't make the cut for the film kind of stand out, maybe for me. And I, I incorporate it into my own collection of music that I've written. So yeah, there are definitely multiple instances, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Now, do you also write songs, like the lyrics for music, like going back? Yeah, well, uh, it's been a while, I'd say, <laughs> maybe about, it's been about 10 years since I wrote my last song song with lyrics. Um, I had, a, I had a few friends in, in college who were singers and uh, songwriters and I would lay down mainly more of the backbone of the music in terms of like the guitar and the piano and bass and the drums and they'd write the lyrics and stuff and they'd sing over that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's definitely, I think it's, yeah, I've been thinking about it for a while. Maybe I want to revisit getting back into songwriting just, just, for, the, just for the fun of it, I guess. Well, because I, I know like a lot of, um a lot of tv shows right now you know like umbrella academy or um yeah. like a lot of these marvel or disney shows they're like um episodics they have a lot of trendy songs that's um you know, like a band like oh what like cafe music maybe or um like indie type music where you have like a band singing um are those yeah. would those songs be that something that are already made or would those kind of be made to order for the show? That's, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a great question. And I think a lot of people ask that. They think about how much of a composer's job involves, uh, what, what, is, what, is the, what is the extent of the jurisdiction that they have over the music? In many of the higher end TV shows and films like Umbrella Academy and, and Marvel and stuff, most of the time I'd say that the songs are already pre-existing songs that are licensed by um, the production companies to be used for those scenes or those shots and stuff like that. And there's a whole other, there's a whole other industry of, of, of musicians and composers that work for placement deals. They keep writing songs and keep submitting it to, to licensing companies that just send it out in all directions to be used in film. Now, that being said, though, on, on smaller level projects, uh, some smaller level TV shows and feature film projects, many a times a band is kind of hired or just a songwriter is hired to write music for that specific, that specific scene. Um, I have a friend, actually, she was at the right place, right time. And she had she was costed as an extra in a, in a show, uh, which is a documentary where there was a wedding taking place in the documentary which was so it was a real wedding that was happening and when it was it was documented and they were asking around if they they needed music for the, for the wedding for the wedding scene and she was like oh i have original music and i know two other musicians uh, who can just play with me and they were like fantastic let's hear the track they she gave her own track for the for the thing and she performed live. She played the guitar, sang her song, and she had a violinist and a cellist uh, perform the version of that song with her. So she got an acting credit, uh, a songwriter credit, and a composer credit just from being an extra. So it's in, in some instances on a smaller scale, I guess there's more there's more room for people composers jumping in as songwriters as well. So yeah, what an what an exciting experience for her. To yeah. be able to just do that and to yeah. step up and to have that courage too. You know, that's, Absolutely, that's yeah. yeah. Well, have you done any acting yourself? Uh, well, I think I was, I think I was like in, a, in an ad when I was a kid in, in India. Um, but I don't think uh, it's hard to deviate into the acting industry while I'm here because again, I'm international, so I'm on, I'm kind of bound to working in the music industry but i would love to maybe get into acting or even filmmaking at some point down the line i don't know uh but not yet though not yet well you you seem very young and it seems like there's so many possibilities opening up for you which is very exciting and okay so the Thank internet so how has the internet changed the world of composing or no? I, th I think i think the internet has is the number one thing that's transformed um, the entire industry for composing. Um, 
mainly because of the way networking is happening now on such a crazy level and collaboration and, and all, all of these elements. Um, I met David Chai through a Facebook group randomly. I think I posted asking to collaborate with directors and uh, upcoming filmmakers and stuff. And he said, oh, he needed a composer. He, um, it was a almost no budget short film that he was doing. And I was just like, sure, I mean, I'll take it. It's well, one of my first few gigs, uh, why not? And it, the film looked beautiful, the, the entire script was lovely. Uh, the acting was amazing. It was a film of this called Reject, uh, which I think we worked on back in 2020. And um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, let's, let's go for it. And I got multiple other projects through just networking online on, on Facebook. And I, I the, the further I got into the industry, I learned that, uh, you don't need to be in a physical room with an entire orchestra to have an orchestra to record your piece of music. There are uh, people sending their works to Budapest, session musicians in Budapest, where they record the entire orchestra and to send the files back. And back then, I think back in the day, you had to be there. You had to be there in the room for like a week with the conductor and the, and the, and the sound mixer and, and all of that kind of stuff with the director, everyone just stuck in one room. But now with the internet, I don't even need to leave my studio to work. I have never met David Chai in person. I don't even think we've seen each other's face. We've not even seen each other's oh, wow. face. Yeah, we've never oh, even wow. once had a Zoom call. We always spoke on the phone. So that's even before, oh. yeah. So, I mean, and we did an entire TV show together, uh, which is just amazing, I think. Um, well, yeah, it's a very long story short. Yeah, the internet has changed everything for the good, I'd say. Um, I'm sure there are many downsides as well, but I don't, I haven't encountered any yet, so. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, chances are there's going to be a season two for Good Cop. I really hope so. In that, yeah. I hope that you know, comes through for you. Um, what about programs like GarageBand, where you can create music on online? What is is that something? Is that something in your toolbox or what? what yeah. So, about? so um, there's an entire kind of array of what's known as DAWs, digital audio workstations, where all of us, all of us musicians create music. We record music and we create music in, in those DAWs. And uh, GarageBand, I believe, is a, is, a, is, is a basic free version that comes with all Apple products. Uh, now I believe with iPhones as well, you can get GarageBand, which kind of introduces a lot of people into getting into uh, music composition and recording. Um, in fact, GarageBand was one of the first few softwares that I dabbled with um, when I was, probably I think even like 11 years old when one of the first few uh, iMacs came out or something. And uh, the, 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 the premium version of GarageBand is Logic Pro, um, which is what I use to work. And the simplicity that comes with these DAWs, at least the starting versions, has definitely gotten a lot, a lot of people into creating music. I mean, from the pop industry, from the hip hop industry to even like songwriting and stuff. Billie Eilish, um, 17 years old, swept the Grammys uh, when, in her first, I think, in her first nominations back in 2019 or 2020. She created the entire album with her brother in their bedroom um, because they had the tools to do it. And uh, I, I think it's safe to say that a lot of people are getting into experimenting and, and, and doing their own thing, starting their own journey without being needed. Uh, having the need to be tied to like a big record label or, or a publishing house or whatever it is. So yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely very powerful, all these DAWs, even GarageBand. So as the music composer, could you be affiliated with a record label? I mean, not necessarily um, as, a, as a composer, is, it, is that something? It's it's not not specifically a thing to my knowledge. It's more about getting tied with a composer roster uh, uh, label or, or or production house. There are specific, like I guess it kind of works like how agents kind of work, it, to my knowledge. Um, there are a bunch of them here in LA, and I know a few people who are tied to a couple of uh, music composer roster houses, and I guess they just um, they get assigned work through them and, and they, the, the house takes a cut of, of the fee that, that comes in. But I'm not too sure. I don't think there's any involvement with record labels as per se, as uh, film composers. So, yeah. So say when the soundtrack comes out as, as the record, or I know record is like so old fashioned. I don't know, do people still say LPs or 
ETs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they say, it's not LLPs. They say, I think it's called like OSTs now, official soundtracks uh, for a movie's soundtrack. I don't think it's called an album necessarily, even though it's under that category on like Spotify or whatever. Uh, but I, I think it's, uh, yeah, OSTs is now the, the word for it. Yeah. So um, uh, in my experience, uh, I'll give you an example just from, from my work. Uh, Reject, for example, the short film that I did, um, it wasn't tied to any uh, major production company or, or any of that. Of course, it was a very indie scale project done by David Chai and his team. So in that instance, I was like, I, I've written a bunch of music for this short film uh, and I would love to have like um, just a soundtrack released on Spotify and Apple Music and I'll deal with, I'll do all of that myself. I'll cut up the music, I'll mix it, master it, and I'll, I'll put it out myself. Is it okay if I do that? And I attain 100% of the rights on royalties for the music. Mm. Not that there would be like a whole sum of them. They're all just up there for people to, directors to listen to more than to share with fans or anything. Mm. Uh, and he was totally fine with it, of course. So I just went ahead and did it. But I think on a larger scale, like um, I actually had a word with uh, composer John Powell who did the music for How to Train Your Dragon, um, the beautiful, beautiful music. And it's a lovely animated movie. Um, and he, I, I asked him, so, I mean, when is the, I would like to see the score for all the, all the music that you have, like, like the public score. And he said that it's all uh, Disney or Pixar's rights. It's, it's, not my, it's not my control. And I would assume that the same applies to the music as well. It's tied with the production companies, especially if it's like one of the big five, like Warner Brothers, Universal, or any of them. Um, they don't attain all rights to it. I would say maybe like 50% or 30% unaware of the cut, but all the green lights are given by the, the head honcho in that situation on a bigger scale. So, so yeah. Well, is that, I mean, is that something that you would like to aspire to be part of? Like one of the big major production like, yeah, I mean, to, to do, yeah, to do like a Warner film or like a, a Disney or a Pixar or something like that. Of course, it would be, I think it would be fantastic. But uh, personally, for me, ever since I came on this path to do music, um, it was never about being objectively the best as per the stature of the project that I'm doing, but the best in terms of the artistic value of the project that I'm doing, I think, you know? Like, if I, if I did, like, a, a DC movie, like Aquaman 2, at this stage, I would be over the moon. I would be jumping with joy, and I would be, like, completely happy. But if something like that is what my, my entire legacy as a composer and my aspirations or whatever would take me, that if something like that was something that I would be known for, I think I would be kind of disappointed. I would rather do something of a much 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 smaller scale but has so much more artistic value and something that i think is a beautiful work of art and that i've been a part of it even if i do it for free you know uh i think that's more of a life goal for me but right now i will 100 percent say yes to aquaman too and anything of that sort of any scale so so yeah that's the artist in you Right, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's in I I would say to say I think it's in all of us, especially a lot of film composers, because uh, we really love the artistic value of what we do more than just doing it for the size of the project. I'd say so. Yeah. Well, it sounds also very exciting, and I I just love that with all the different types of music out there, there's always something fresh, always something new. Absolutely. So finding that, and creating that, and you know, and just like yeah. experiments experiments yeah. different genres and I mean what, what's your favorite part of all that my favorite part a hundred percent is when there is something I have not heard before being loved by everyone that watches it and I think as of recent times I would say my recent I mean like this year I think euphoria is one of the one of the flagships on that on that front um the composer um his name can't get to me. He did such a fantastic job. Uh, majority of the entire score are songs written and edited to fit in with the movie. And moments when there's heavy dialogue happening, it's the same song, but just without the lyrics and just without the voice there as to not interfere with the dialogue. And it's extremely creatively done um, to take something uh, as kind of semi-dystopian of a, of, a, of a show and a story 
um, with the beautiful color color grading and, and the set designs and, and the shots that's there of the entire film, paired with the way the music is done, it's it's so innovative and inventive. And I'm glad that I'm not the only one that feels that way because as soon as the finale dropped, uh, any short film project that I got, so many of them were like, oh, we're looking for something like, kind of like Euphoria, somewhat like Euphoria. Oh, maybe if you can do something like Euphoria, that would be great. There was a big amount of demand for that kind of style. And that made me feel really nice because I felt like things are changing, things are evolving. Like, you know, we're going past, now this is what's new. And I think that's important uh, to embrace the change as to like, stay away against it. And I think, yeah, that's that's my favorite part. I'm down to go with the flow of what's next um, because that's what we all love and that's the new big thing, so yeah. Well, and then be part of creating what's next too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's, that's so exciting. Yeah. You're so cool. I'm so I'm so glad I had a chance to meet you and I'm so glad you're here. And I, I love of that course, you know, music. You know, music's yeah. so important to me and I think it really elevates any story, even, I mean, people listen to music every day, right? So, yeah. You know, so I love what you're doing. What, what's your, what are you working on now? You so that? right now I'm, I'm working on a few short films. Um, there's another couple of feature films back home in India that are currently in uh, pre-production that I'm waiting on uh, more information, uh, some green lights with the studio. Um, there's an interesting, uh, I think it's like a, murder mystery thriller like an eight-way kind of situation uh which is is, is very fascinating to me because i've only read half the script he hasn't given me the full script uh because i i he's kind of working on the final plot twist to the entire thing and those kind of things i think are the most exhilarating because uh, as good as the story is yes it's beautiful it's dramatic but then when you're part of the murder mystery kind of thing and you're not you haven't finished the entire thing it's just like I want to know what's happening. Like, give me what's next. So yeah, that's just a small, fun little thing uh, that I'm excited for. Aside from that, there are a few indie uh, short films that I'm uh, that are based in New York that are in the pipe. Uh, one of them is just about wrapping up. Beautiful drama between just about three, if not just two characters in one room. Um, exceptional color grading with like orange light. So the music is kind of... Um, it's all it's all just just strings just like upfront close strings and it's very intimate and it, it, it's 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 somewhat on the edge of eerie uh kind of like unsettling but it's also melodic and it has this baroque element to it like this decadence to it as to like this is supposed to feel this way this is correct in how it's feeling this unsettlingness is right you know so these kind of hybrid twists of like combinations of different feelings are always very fascinating to me. Like how do you add fear and happiness together, musically speaking, or how do you add sorrow and even sorrow and joy together, you know, like uh, as, as two different components. So yeah, that, uh, those little projects I'm kind of excited for. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited for you. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. And it's great to see someone, I mean, cause I know this is the type of path you can do for the rest of your life and still oh, do something new which yeah. is all the more exciting and you know, the more you do it you're constantly evolving and growing and it's just really yeah really yeah i mean it is a it is a long haul industry for sure um a lot of the greats are definitely i think pushing 60 uh as of now and they're still setting the bar high for for everyone all of us aspiring composers so um yeah, it's definitely a long haul. I'm looking forward to the journey, I guess. Yeah. And eventually you'll be collecting your own, you know, Oscar there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's that is the dream. Of course. Is it but, in there? Uh, you know, some path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's on the path. Yeah, but I'm trying to. It's it's difficult sometimes because we we um, there are a lot of ups and downs for sure. And it can get kind of hard to, the, the image of that golden Oscar can sometimes fade away on down days and stuff. But then I think it's about constantly reminding yourself that it's not about, it's the most cliche thing you probably ever hear. It's not about the end goal, it's about the journey. Exactly. It kind of stands true in this sense, which, yeah, which I want, it's, it, we must embrace, so yeah. <laughs> well, it's always about the journey. And it's yeah. funny because a lot of times when a lot of people hit the end of that journey, they're like, okay, what now? <laughs> they, want, yeah. they want to keep going. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, hit the ceiling. There's no way, <laughs> nowhere else to go at this point. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Well, Armand, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I think what you're doing is amazing. I want, you know, I'm going to see great things from you. I just know it. I already have. Thank you so much. Thank Love you so much. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for taking the time out for this. This has been, yeah, it's fantastic. Well, and so we had a little construction, a little phone ring. That's LA, right? <laughs> that's LA. That, that's the life. That's the life. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a fantastic week and I will talk with you soon, I hope. Absolutely. Thank you so much, oh, Sophia. And Armand, quick question. Um, if people want to reach out to you, how can they? Where, where... Oh, you can follow me on my Instagram. Uh, this is a convenient spot where I put all my stuff. Armand.bbg underscore music. Uh, that's the spot. Or, yeah, you can hit me up on my website, armandbbg.com. Um, yeah, a couple of different places where you can find me. Um, I respond in a matter of, I'd say, just 24 hours, if not lesser, to anyone who just wants to say hi or chat. Yeah. All right. I'll definitely put those links in the description box. All right, cool. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you All soon. All right. Take care. Thank you so much, Sophia. Take care. Bye-bye.